with how good all the 3D Mario games are, there are bound to be problems eventually. So today I'm going to talk about the worst features in each game from Mario 64 all the way to Odyssey. And to let you know, there are timestamps in the description in case you want to hear me talk about a specific game. With Mario 64, this is more of, more of an obvious one, but it is definitely the camera controls. Right away, noticing what a 64 has to offer, immediately I notice just how bad the camera is, and for some levels it can be excruciating, such as TikTok clock when trying to get over some of the platforms, or rainbow ride with uh, trying to jump onto platforms. It can be very, very annoying to deal with because it's just a straight up inconvenience for the player and i'm glad that they learned from their mistake obviously because the other 3d mario games don't have the same problem where if i'm trying to switch the camera or trying to see where i'm going it doesn't take a long time for me to do it or half the time i can't even see where i'm going because the camera is just it's not good it, and they finally fixed it up in sunshine with having full 360 control over the camera. In Mario Sunshine, the worst thing is definitely the blue coins. I was stuck for a little bit thinking about that the lack of the amount of levels there are. In the game, there's only seven compared to 64, for example, which had like 15. But what leads into this is that the blue coins take up, there's 250, 240 blue coins i mean in the entire game that's 24 shines that's guaranteed if the blue coins weren't in the game a guaranteed three more levels we could have had 10 levels but three of them were taken up by blue coins in the game and a lot of these blue coins are just cryptic to get like the durian mission or some of them are just hidden in random spots that you don't even know where they are half the time it's just, again, like I said, an inconvenience for the player because, and a lot of the time, there's no indication as well. There's no indication of, you can't look into what the level has or what coins you've collected in the level already. So, again, it just drags on, and then now you're over here looking up a walkthrough, or you have to look up a walkthrough if you're trying to find all these coins, because like I said, a lot of the coins are very annoying to get, and you can't even keep track of the ones you've already obtained. So, like I said, it's an inconvenience, and they're all over the place. Delfino Plaza, each level, and random spots. It's just, it's not fun to collect them. So, Sunshine is definitely with the blue coins. In Galaxy, the worst thing is the motion controls. Now, I know I've talked about this before, but it's became more and more apparent to me over the years that the motion controls like i've said before are definitely forced throughout the game they're not they're not a good inclusion they're not fun stars they're not fun in general okay only one only stars that i had fun with were the manta ray levels but that's about it i didn't like the bubbles and i didn't certainly did not like the balls the balls were the worst for me but Overall, I didn't like them. I only like the Manta Ray ones because it's kind of fun, but it's still kind of annoying when you're trying to get to the end. But you're stuck having, you're stuck because you can't, you can't rotate the motion, you can't rotate, rotate the Wii remote because a lot of the times it just doesn't work. It feels like it just doesn't work. And even with a Wii Motion Plus controller, it just still feels so cryptic. Even in 3D All Stars, at times it doesn't feel. It doesn't feel necessary um, they could have easily replaced it with different they could have replaced it with different galaxies in the game like with sunshine with the blue coins only upside of the motion controls is that there's very few of the levels in the game but overall the motion controls are super forced you can tell just to show that hey our controller is different Nintendo is trying to act like they created something revolutionary Thankfully, though, they haven't fully done that idea with the Switch. They've had tried before with the Switch, but they aren't keeping it as the main targeting of their system or their games. Moving on to Galaxy 2, this was definitely the hardest game to find issues with, in my opinion. I know I fanboy over Galaxy 2 a lot, but it's true. I really, 
do have a difficult time trying to find problems with the game. But it, for me, it is going to have to be the lack of original content or repetitiveness of the ideas from Galaxy 1. Now I understand, I understand it's a sequel, right? There's going to be a lot of ideas reused, but still, I feel like a sequel should keep ideas that were good, but but also try to keep improving on it, right? And Galaxy 2 did improve a lot, but it kept motion controls in, and it kept purple coins in in Galaxy 1. Now, purple coins didn't annoy me too much, but they kept the motion controls in. Now, there wasn't that many of them in this game, but they still kept the ball rolling. Like, one, for example, in particular, and now I remember this one, but it's because of how annoying the star was, was collecting the purple coins on on one of the ball rolling galaxies there's only like two of them and one it, it's not rolling masterpiece it's the other one but you have to you have to navigate your way through like one section in particular is like where you have to use you have to go around like these pillars that will just knock you off the side if you hit one of them which again can get very annoying really fast and it's even worse with the purple coins because you're actually needing to collect something. And there's and there's one green star in that galaxy where you have to get on this, like you have to get on this freaking slope and jump up and jump up to get the green star. And again, it took a lot of attempts, very annoying. But overall, yeah, there's not really much problems I have with Galaxy 2 because, like I said, it really does improve more than it reduces or stays the same compared to galaxy one with its ideas 3d land it is going to be the special worlds now reason being is because the special worlds i think are a good idea and i'm glad that they fixed this with 3d world but uh, pretty much most of the special worlds there's eight of them they're just reused they're reused levels and they just they're either reversing them or they shorten the timer down but again they could have easily made it more original or don't even have them in the game just do what 3d world did and only have like three of them and it would make the game a lot more better and less repetitive if because i'm someone who likes to 100 percent my games and going through those special worlds were definitely annoying especially with the star coins trying to collect them but yeah, overall, there's not really much problems that I have with 3D Land. Overall, like in the main game, not including the special worlds, because 3D Land did balance it a lot. But overall, it is definitely the special worlds that I had the most problems with. With 3D World, the most annoying thing is definitely trying to 100% the game. Now, like I've said, with 100%ing the game, 3D World is the worst one to 100%. 100%. And. It's the most annoying when you have to complete every level is all five characters. There's five stamps in the game, and the, you, can, you don't obtain them by going through the level. You get them by completing every level as every character, and that includes the mystery houses. That includes Mario, Luigi, Toad, uh, Peach and Rosalina all five of them you have to complete every level with doesn't matter You have to complete every level including the mystery houses Besides the captain load toad levels, but that's because they're captain toad levels other than that It's very annoying especially when you have to go back and complete levels that are not fun to go through they're just cryptic and annoying and Overall, yeah, it is definitely the most annoying to 100% and pretty sure no game will top it even though odyssey i feel like it has too many moons at least they were different compared to 3d world which is just hey complete all the if you want to 100% the game fully get all the stamps have that fit star in your profile thing then you need to complete every level in the game is all five characters i don't know what they were thinking when designing that it just it's very annoying for the player now last with mario odyssey it is the lack of characters throughout the game now they went back with mario 64 and mario sunshine with not having extra characters to play as it just has mario now since galaxy one 
all the 3D Mario games have had play, well, technically 64 DS, but I don't really include that because that's a remake. Every 3D Mario game has had additional characters to play as, whether it's only Luigi or 3D Land had Luigi, but 3D World had five characters too. But still, they could have crammed Luigi in there at least somewhere. Now, they did have Balloon World, but come on, that doesn't count. They did have outfits, but that doesn't count either they could have crammed them into the game somewhere not of again not and not come having to collect all of the moons imagine having imagine having to do what 3d world had but you have to collect 999 moons as two characters or five characters yeah um mario odyssey would have definitely lost a lot of points there for from my 8.5 or 9 out of 10 score and yeah, overall, that's why when I discussed in my what I expect in a new 3D Mario game or an Odyssey sequel, they need to bring back different characters, not just have them as outfits or just pushing them off to the side as just a DLC NPC like with Luigi's Blue New World. And there you have it. That is going to do it for my... Uh, worst features or what I believe are the worst features in every 3d Mario game overall like I said in the beginning while the 3d world 3d Mario games I mean do have a lot of flaw, do have their flaws mo they are still great games like overall they are still great games they're not in no way none of the games on this list in my opinion are bad even the weakest that I find 3d land is not bad it does lack in some features compared to the others, but it's not bad. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think is the worst features. And again, like I've been saying, thank you all for the support on the videos. I do appreciate it. Liking, commenting, subscribing, all of that. I do appreciate it, seriously. So yeah, I will see you all in the next video.